UTPA baseball looking to bust out the brooms against North Dakota. UTPA student athletes receive their end of year awards. And Martin Kass breaks another program record. This is Bronc Country. Hey everyone and welcome to Bronx Country, I'm Jonah Goldberg. Well, it's almost like the Bronx are forming their own Justice League. Or maybe it's the Avengers. On the one hand, you've got Super Sam pitching for truth, justice, and the Bronx standard. But at and behind the plate, it's the whack hitter of the week, the incredible Hal. We'll start with Super Sam looking to set the tone in game one of a three game series against North Dakota. In a jam early with two on and one out, but the double play is the pitcher's best friend. Go back to the dugout. Now, Street leads the whack in strikeouts, but most of them are swinging. Not here, or here, or here. First three strikeouts are all looking. Not to say Street didn't get anyone swinging. Fifth inning, Taylor Peterson, yep. Sixth inning, Street decides to go for some variety. Zach Trigstad down looking. And then Jeff Campbell, swinging. Street struck out eight, five of them looking. Still, Super Sam can only do so much on his own. He needs some offense. Down one to nothing in the fourth. Two on and two out. And Evan Mason had a huge game. Delivers the RBI single there. Game tied at one. On to the seventh, same score. Runners on the corners, one out. And Edgar Cordon lays down the suicide squeeze. The Bronx lead two to one. Next inning, there's that man again. Mason with the tapper to the right side and speed will kill you. A rush throw gets away, so Mason goes to second. Now he's trying to steal third. And what was that I said about speed forcing rust throws? Mason scores to cap a career best four for four day. Bronx up three one. Ninth inning. Street trying to close it out, and he does just that. Fifth straight complete game for Super Sam. It's his NCAA best ninth of the year. Street now an NCAA best 11 and 0. Bronx win, three to one. Try not to think about it too much. Uh, obviously, the games at the moment are really big for the team. So uh, we're right in the bunch, of, middle of a bunch of uh, teams, and these guys are one of them. So. You know, every week it's important now. Every game counts. Every game counts. It's huge. And, uh, yeah, it's really just getting the win for the team. He's beaten uh, every Friday night guy that uh, they've thrown. Um, obviously, Friday night you're going to throw your ace. Uh, they're a pitcher uh, through a great game too. But having Sam uh, and all, all, all teams that have the luxury to have a, a Friday night guy like him, it's, uh, it's, a, big, uh, it's a big luxury and it's, and it's a big momentum uh, push for the entire team. So uh, he's... Uh, Super Sam, like Jonah Goldberg calls him. Coach Lopez and Coach Matron have been working with me uh, through this spring, and it's been a long and hard road, but uh, luckily tonight I saw some good pitches and I was able to put some good swings on it. Well, Coach Lopez made some adjustments with him. Uh, we, uh, his, his, uh, his stance totally about two weeks ago. Coach Lopez uh, he took the, the compression away, having more just using the hands. And he's really, I mean, he had a good series of Chicago once we started making the changes, and, and today four for four. So hopefully he'll continue that. But a lot of credit goes uh, to Coach Lopez and also for to Evan for uh, being coachable and making the changes. On to Saturday, and we switch from DC to Marvel. It's the incredible house turn. We go straight to the sixth inning with two outs. The Bronx haven't had a base runner yet, and they trail two to nothing. Never mind. Evan Mason breaks up the perfect game with a walk. Next batter, Jesus Garcia. Well, that's catcher's interference. The Bronx have a runner in scoring position. Now it's Brian Ramirez's turn, and he walks. Base is loaded. Maybe Alex Howe was unhappy about the no-hitter. If so, we're going to like him when he's angry, because that's when he becomes the incredible Howe. And Howe smash. That's going to score two, but there's a bobble in center, so now it's going to score three. The Bronx may only have one hit, but they lead three to two. Top of the seventh, North Dakota gets all three of those runs back and still threatening. Base is loaded with one out. 
Daniel Lockard with a pop up and back up first. Victor Garcia Jr. to the seats. He makes the grab. Runner at third tags and heads home. Look at that throw by Garcia. And look at that block by the incredible Howe. He holds on to the ball for the out. You'd think Howe had been catching his entire life. Actually, I thought he was closer to the, than what he was. I, uh, and I didn't know actually if I caught the ball. So Vic, Vic made another good throw. I didn't, you know, made a terrific catch. And then made another good throw. And, um, you know, and I was fortunate enough to catch the ball. You know, it was a bit of a short hop. Caught the ball, turned around and just two hands and wore the, wore the hit. Oh no, I thought there was no way. I just ran back. Um, hopefully I had a shot. Um, just ran back, looked up and the ball was right there. Stuck my glove out, caught it, and um, made a good throw home. And how he made a good play at the plate, so I'll credit to him. That was a not even a top ten. That was number one. I mean, Victor goes full speed, turns around, has to deal with the uh, with the uh, bleachers. He catches the ball, turns around, and throws a strike to uh, to Howe, and then Howe catches it, holds on to it, even though he gets knocked over. That was a forget uh, top ten. That was a top play. That play may have been a momentum swinger. Bottom of the inning, bases loaded one out, new pitcher, new hitter, and on the first pitch, Edgar Cardone comes up with a pinch hit single. That brings home Garcia Jr. Dylan Engelard cut down at the plate, but hey, Bronx within one. Next batter, Garcia with a ground ball. Safe! North Dakota can't get an out as Shane Ammons scores the tying run. Ramirez is up next, and he gives the Bronx the lead. Pinch runner Andy Fortuna comes home, Bronx up 6-5. Another new pitcher, but with the incredible how at the plate, the outcome is similar. Triple to the wall. That scores Garcia and Ramirez, Bronx up 8-5, and that turns out to be the final score as the Bronx clinch their fifth straight WAC Series victory. We decided to lay off some of, uh, some of the pitches, that's what we spoke about. Uh, Got, got the walks when we needed them, which gave the opportunity to guys like uh, Ramirez and, and Alex and Cordon to get the big hit for us. Because if you chase those uh, pitches and you don't get those walks, those guys never get the opportunity to do that. So it was a good team uh, team win today. We seemed to get a lot of hard contact. We just couldn't get that hit. And, you know, it came. He was a different pitcher from the windup compared to the set. You know, he, he was a bit more wild from the set. So once we got that first runner, that's where the floodgates opened for us. And, you know, we were, putting, we were having some really good at-bats beforehand, but just nothing fell. Game three on Sunday, Bronx looking to break out the brooms, and they did so in a big way. Started off in the first. Two on, nobody out for the incredible Howe, and it's like deja vu all over again. Another wall ball. This triple scores Jesus Garcia and Evan Mason. Bronx up two to nothing. Howe now with three consecutive two run smashes. Next batter, Alberto Morales, Yahtzee. Bronx up three to nothing out of the gate. In the top of the third, North Dakota ties the game, but in the bottom of the inning, Brian Ramirez may speak softly, but he carries a big stick into the Bronx bullpen. A three run shot, Ramirez is second of the season, Bronx up 6-3. Move ahead to the sixth, Bronx lead cut to 6-4. Let me know if this script sounds familiar at all. Two on, two out, and Garcia singles home a run. Then Mason follows suit. Bronx up 8-4. And then we're back to the incredible Howe. Line drive to left field, and it gets past the diving Dalton Parrott and rolls all the way to the wall. Howe flips on the afterburners, and he's being waved home. First career inside the park home run, his fifth homer of the season. Bronx up 11-4. Howe finished three for four with a career high far of RBI, a career high tying three runs scored. He was a single short of the cycle. You, you always want, want to think that hitting is contagious. I think uh, uh, Alex has been hot all year. He's been really consistent for uh, the entire season. Uh, Mo showed some signs today. Uh, Mason is showing some signs. Uh, Ramirez is showing some signs. So we're hoping, and that's what we talked a little bit about at the, uh, at the end of the game, that we're hoping that uh, this is the time where they all kind of mesh together, get hot, because this is when we need them. Alex Henson on the mound for the Bronx. After giving up that fourth run, Henson went into lockdown mode. Fifth inning, Jeff Campbell down looking. Sixth inning, Luis Calvo down on three pitches. And then Henson gets a little more help from Howe. Nails Parrot at second, inning over. Seventh inning, Tyler Paulus swinging. And with one out in the ninth, 
Henson punctuates his outing with his seventh strikeout. Career high eight and two thirds for Henson. Bronx roll 13 to four. Started off pretty strong and uh, third inning, I believe, like I got some CNI ground ball hits and then they started squaring me up a little bit. So I kind of just had to ch change something. You know, I started aiming the ball a little bit and not really just throwing it in there and competing. So after that, I feel like I settled down. Here's a look at the WAC standings. The Bronx started the weekend in line for the sixth seed in the WAC tournament. They're now in line for the third seed and a game back of Utah Valley for the second seed, which includes a first round bye. And keep in mind that the Bronx hold the tiebreaker over Utah Valley by winning the season series. The Bronx magic number to clinch a playoff spot, now four. Sacramento State, the only team to clinch so far. Their magic number to clinch the number one seed is two, but the Bronx can stop them from clinching that this weekend when they welcome the Hornets to town for the final home series of the year, Friday at seven, Saturday at six, and Sunday at one at Edinburgh Baseball Stadium. We're looking forward to it. Uh, like I told the guys, uh, they're in first place. They're coming here, and, and that's what you want to play. You want to play the good teams, and, and hopefully you get to play them at home. So it's going to be a good series. It's the series that uh, I've circled because they're obviously they're in first place, and they've got a good team. And then we're going to see uh, just how good they are and just how good we are uh, all next weekend. It's finals week, so we're approaching the end of the year. You know what that means. It's time for awards. Coming up on Brown Country, we take you to the Student Athlete Awards Banquet for a full rundown of the honors. Swing and a miss, strike three. Right through the change up, three pumps his fist, he heads back to the dugout. He's pitched a career high 10 innings of baseball so far. Oh, run, score! Run, win! Run, win! Run, win! This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. At the end of every year, UTPA Athletics holds an end of year banquet to honor its student athletes for their accomplishments on the courts, the track, the field, in the classroom, and in the community. This year, 16 award winners and 12 athletic endowment honorees got to take the stage. Romeo Villarreal has the story. The annual Bronx Sports Banquet is an event put on by the athletic department staff to appreciate the hard work student athletes demonstrate throughout the academic year, both in athletics and in the classroom. The night started with the arriving coaches and athletes being decorated with masks and an assortment of beads to match with the Mardi Gras style of the event. Next, the student athletes were treated with a buffet and music played by UTPA's own jazz ensemble. After everyone had settled down and had a bite to eat, it was time for the awards to be handed out. The first awards of the night were the Mr. and Mrs. Bronk Awards, which are given out to the two students who were most spirited and team-oriented in any sport. The winner of the Mr. Bronk Award was Larry Toivonen of men's basketball. I'm honored to be Mr. Bronk, so, I mean, it's, uh, it's very nice to be honored. Uh, recognized because uh, I'm actually pretty taken from this afar. The winner of the Miss Bronk Award was Wanda Beguelin of women's tennis. It's amazing to be recognized after four years uh, playing for UTPA. So it feels good to be recognized after four years and winning the award. It's always great to win an award. So it's a good. Nice. The second award of the night was the Breakout Athlete of the Year, which is given to the students who have shown the most substantial improvement in their sport from the previous college season. Taking home the award on the men's side was college basketball's own Shaq Hines. Just a big leap from my freshman year to now. You know, it definitely was a huge leap, and I got to get all the credit to my teammates and my coaches. For the women, the Breakout Athlete of the Year was Regan Greenwood of women's tennis. I'm really happy. I was expecting to get an award, but came up with a... It's a really great season, so I'm just really happy I got an award. 
Next, two endowments were handed out, starting with the Anne Lamantia Endowment Award, which is given to a senior female student athlete who has shown strong academic performance in her time as a Bronx. This year's winner of the Anne Lamantia Award was Nicole Masaki of volleyball. It feels good to win. Um, I mean, knowing that I was able to get an award feels good, and knowing that they're recognizing that kind of thing is nice to know. Next up was the Lou Hassel Endowment Award given to a senior male athlete who has shown strong academic performance in his time as a Bronc. The winner of this year's Lou Hassel Award was Ricardo Hopker of men's tennis. It's great. I mean, it's good to be recognized. Uh, this is the first award that I win, so it's great. The Rookie of the Year Award was awarded to two freshmen who made the most immediate contributions to their team during their season. The winner on the men's side was Javier Corretero of men's track and field. It's a surprise. I, mean, I didn't really hope this, this award is, is, is amazing. Uh, this season is, is being really, really well. Uh, you know, it's my first year in the United States, it's the first time that I live of my country, of Spain. So I'm really, really proud of, of all this war of this year. So I'm, I'm really, really happy. This year's Female Rookie of the Year was awarded to Shante Goff of women's basketball. I think I put in a lot of work for it during, during the season, especially during practice time. And I know I have a, a, a lot more things that I need to accomplish because to, for, for me, this is, I mean, it's a good award, but this is not, this is more, I want more than what I have now. So I think that well, I'm going to get better as a, um, as a player and we're definitely going to get better as a team and try to win the WAC championship. The Comeback Player of the Year award goes to one athlete in either men's or women's sports who overcame significant factors impacting his or her last playing season to have an impact this season. This year that award was presented to Alex Howell of baseball who came back from a summer of injury to lead the Bronx offense. Ah, it's a great honor, uh, definitely unexpected. Um, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was really a big shock today. Uh, like I said, it's a good honor to win and uh, I'm very happy to win. The final individual awards of the night were the Student Athlete of the Year awards given to the students with overall outstanding performance in their sport. The Men's Student Athlete of the Year was a tie between two of this year's most noted athletes at UTPA, track and field zone Martin Cass, who was in California at a meet, and pitcher Sam Street, who two days prior, the event had just won his 11th game of the season. It means a lot. Uh, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people put in the hard work. Like, I mean, we had four catches this year, so it shows how uh, grueling it is on those guys as well and uh, you know, the coaches. It's been a long year and it's, you know, exciting times ahead for us. The Female Student Athlete of the Year was awarded to Nicole Masaki, who earlier that night had won the Anne Lamantia Endowment Award. I'm very honored. It's nice, it's nice to have this feeling and get an award like this uh, after you know, all the hard work that you've put in so, your years playing. The next awards presented on the night were awards dedicated to team performance in different areas of athletics. The first of these awards was none other than Performance of the Year, which is awarded to the team that has done something great for their program and the department in terms of athletic accomplishment. This year that award was presented to the baseball team for their 3-1 victory over 15th ranked Oklahoma State. Big win, uh, huge for our program, not only for our team, for our program. Uh, it was an incredible feeling beating them, you know, getting that final out, knowing that it was in the bag, and it was a good feeling. The next group award was the Athletic Director's Academic Cup, which is presented to the team with the highest cumulative GPA. And this year that award went to women's tennis with a combined GPA of 3.61. It's great to be recognized because we work really hard in the classroom. We all have like, really great GPAs, so it's just great to be recognized at the banquet at the end of the year for all hard work in class. The last award of the night was the Athletic Director's Community Service Cup, which was presented to women's basketball. It feels great to be recognized. That we don't do it to be recognized, we do it to help people, but we have a great president, Dr. Robert Nelson, who said engage the community. We embraced that, we engaged it, and as a team, over 1,500 hours of community service. After all the awards were handed out, rings were given to senior athletes to wrap up the ceremony. Afterwards, everybody had time to socialize over dessert and take pictures with one another, making more memories for themselves here at UTPA, some of them for the last time. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villarreal. In addition to all those awards, there were quite a few endowment honorees recognized at the banquet. There are varying criteria for each endowment, but the underlying one is good grades. 
And the Bronx were able to honor Dylan Engelhart, Brandon Rausch, Laquita Garner, Carrie Williams, Brian McDonald, Lori Toivinen, Chris Felix, Edgar Cordone, Ashley Garcia, and Wanda Begalin as athletic endowment honorees. One student athlete who wasn't at the banquet to accept his award was Martin Kass. Next on Bronx Country, we'll tell you where he was and what record he was breaking. When it came time to recognize the male student athletes of the year, there was one notable person missing. Sam Street was able to go up there to accept his award, but Martin Kass was not present. Still, it wasn't a day that Kass is likely to soon forget. And that's because he was busy breaking the program record in the 1500 meter run at Stanford's Peyton Jordan Invitational. Kass finished in 343.67, more than a second faster than the previous record, which, by the way, he also set. Koss now holds the top three spots in program history in the 1500 meters. It was the 41st fastest time in the nation, the 26th fastest time in the West region, and best in the WAC, putting Koss in great position to earn a spot in the NCAA regionals. Men's golf also absent from the Student Athlete Awards Banquet as they were in Las Vegas for the WAC Championship. Great showing by Matt Charles, who was tied for the lead after 39 holes. He ended up in fifth, but shot a four under in the first round and three under in the second round. Overall, the Bronx finished sixth in their first WAC championship. If you want to help support these student athletes, donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student athlete scholarships so visit BronxAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. Swing and a miss strike three. Right through the change up street pumps his fist and heads back to the dugout. He's pitched a career high 10 innings of baseball so far. Oh, run score! Run win! Run win! Run win! This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. Just one team and one individual in action this week for the Bronx. UTPA baseball plays host to Sacramento State. The series kicks off Friday at 7. Last chance to see Sam Street pitch at home. The series continues Saturday at 6 and then finishes up Sunday at 1. Sunday is Senior Day. All 13 seniors will be honored in a special pregame ceremony, so make sure you come early. It's also your last chance to help us strike out hunger. Bring four non-perishable food items and get a free ticket. All of the donations stay local as they go to the Food Bank RGV. Women's Golf wraps things up this weekend as well as senior Samantha Paro heads to Florida for the PGA Minority Collegiate Championship. Paro finished one stroke off the lead last year and returns looking to end her career with a medal. Want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx Country this week. Schedule another visit next week for our season finale. But until then... Go Right through the change up street pumps his fist, he heads back to the dugout. He's pitched a career high 10 innings of baseball so far. Oh, run score! Run win! Run win! Run win! 
This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas.